Chapter 1 to 2. Don't mix with bad kids and stay away from girls. I heard college kids do fishy stuff. The woman in her late thirties said just as she tidied my old jacket. She raised her head and gave me a stern look. If a girl comes to you by herself only then talk. Okay? I smiled before shrugging her hands off. Sure. I will keep that in mind. Looking at her again, she had a decent figure with her hair tied in a ponytail. She looked rather beautiful for a middle-aged woman. But the bags under her eyes proved her not-so-beautiful life. She's my mom. My only family besides my older brother. Be careful on your way, son, she said from the door, waving her hands. And watch out for cars. Smiling at her and waving off, I shook my head. She always worries too much when it comes down to family. Our house was an average one-story building, barely enough for two people. From there, just as I walked out of the front gate, my smile vanished in thin air. I shot a look back at our old house and a thought crossed my mind. Unfortunately, I can't help but mix with bad kids, Mom. That's one way for me to make connections. I started walking again through the cold, foggy morning. For reasons unknown, this type of atmosphere is my favorite. Life is beautiful, that's a lie. Life is beautiful when you have money, that's the truth. Money can't buy happiness, that's another lie. Money can buy you happiness as long as you have enough and know how to manage it, that's the truth. Why am I speaking philosophical shit all of a sudden? Because I can confirm my statements. Back in the day I have been at the top of society, and now I am at the bottom. Only when a person experiences both ends of the coin would he understand the real meaning behind it all. A cold breeze brushed past my cheeks just as I rubbed my palms together before puffing a hot breath in them. For years ago, I would have never had to walk to college, let alone wear this cheap failure of a jacket. But good things never last, do they? When I was a child, I was a cheerful one who was the apple of my parents' eyes. Then puberty hit and the bastard who never cared to ask how his parents were doing, came to be. Since puberty, I had quite a bit of development in the period of 48 months. My father's death was indeed a big hit to me. I guess it will take me around half an hour. I was gonna college, and luckily college wasn't that far from my house. I had to choose a worse college than one that I could have gotten into because of the distance. We didn't have money to spare for me to go and study in another city. My dad was a police officer. He was an honest one, I can tell because I have done my research after his death. That's exactly what brought his demise. He once told us about the offer he got from an underworld lord. Free my brother, and you will be richer than ever. That was a very tempting offer to me, but dad apparently didn't want to do evil. He declined of course, and instead, a few days later, he captured the same criminal who had made the offer. That was a foolish move, I knew the moment I heard that. Unless we were lucky, things would have turned haywire. Fortunately, we were indeed lucky, at least everyone else in the family beside dad was. The jail where he kept the criminal was raided just a day after his capture. And there, dad died in a crossfire. It's only later that we learned that he was shot to death by a fellow police officer. Not a criminal. The sadness of losing my father all vanished in thin air, and rage took its place. But I had no idea who the policeman was, and even then, the guy apparently did it accidentally. But guess what, just days later, one of the policeman uncles I was very familiar with, one of my father's close friends per se, got a huge promotion even though the base he was supposed to defend was raided just recently. Dots were matching, and I knew who I needed to kill. But then again, killing's not as simple as it sounds. He was also a policeman. I could indeed catch him off guard since we were close in the past, and he wouldn't expect me to know that he is the culprit. But what after? After I kill him, what happens to me? Jail? Or execution? Killing him would achieve my revenge, but my death would just leave my family as it was before. Empty. I needed a better plan. So I made one. But another problem rose just then. My older brother fell ill, not just any illness, but a serious one. Osteoporosis. A disease that made his spine so weak that he couldn't get up from bed. My dad's death left us with his pension, which we used all in the hospital just to cure him. Then the hardest part started. We now had no money, and my previous plan was based on money. My brother was cured, but he needed to rest for months. He couldn't attend his high school final, so he had to retry next time. But next was just a dream since we had no money to even keep him studying in school. Same with me. So I took in a job, of course. Child labor was illegal, but so was bribing. Does that mean people don't do that? They do, and so I found myself working on a construction site. I had to hide this from my mother, but my brother knew. I just told my mother I worked in an internet cafe and did blogging and stuff, but I in truth knew jack shit about that at all. My mother was devastated when she one day met face to face with bricks in my head. Right at my work. I was forced to stop working. Things turned out worse, and my brother's illness also started acting up again. It was all a mess. Life wasn't going anywhere, and we were meeting a dead end. We asked for our relatives' help, but they already helped us, if that even be called help back in the first surgery. Now they were refusing to do so, 
saying they were lacking money themselves and that we should take a loan instead or sell our house. But taking out a loan was dangerous for us since we knew we wouldn't be able to pay it back anytime soon. But so was selling our house. We had memories of growing up in the house, abandoning that was just not right. We then tried to beg for our father's colleagues. Surely they worked together for decades, they will help, right? We were wrong. They refused, and some never even picked our calls. I even begged the bastard who I was sure killed my dad, assuming he would at least help us out of guilt, but humans are apparently scummier than I thought. When they all refused, I was back to square one again, I had to kill him, no, I had to kill them. Each person we called to, their names, their address, their basic info, I had it memorized in my head. I just had to gain power and influence next. Some needed to die like that police bastard, but some would need to experience hell on earth. We sold out our house and spent it all behind my brother again. He was this time 100% cured and started doing some online jobs after buying a computer from the loan. Things weren't the best now, but it was much better. I got admitted into high school for the first time, but I was already two years older than the others. That didn't shame me though, that was instead an opportunity. They say life isn't a movie, but the high school kids do think of it as one. With a larger body than others, with muscles that I gained from working in the construction site, it was a matter of weeks before I had a gang of my own. I was never a good student, but I forced myself to study hard. Acing was an everyday meal for me. I was growing. Things were moving smoothly as I played my cards just right. I had to ignore a lot of girls, since I truly didn't have the luxury to maintain a girlfriend but I did have my own share of experience with them. Apparently having kids with girlfriends within your gang was more beneficial than I thought at first. In my high school life, I didn't have to spend even 100 cents, if I recall correctly. Everything, from my cafeteria to my school fees, was paid by my minions. It was a great way to live. Was I doing wrong, evil even? Maybe. Did I care though? Not at all. My father died being an honest man, I respect that, but I won't die like that. If it needs me to become evil, a scum even, just like the people I hate the most, I will do it, as long as I get powerful. My minions actually had their own influence. Their family was rich, and their mind was molded to abuse that richness. It's in fact with their help that I got admitted into a college nearby, even though it is worse than the other chances I had. I, after all, couldn't use their money after separating from them. None of them had good grades, so they could only get into some average colleges. I would never stick to them in such a place just because of a few bucks. Today, as I was walking to my college, I was stepping closer to my goal each second closer to becoming influential, gaining political powers, and closer to repaying some certain debts. My planned second stage would start soon. Because of one of my minions, I got some useful information. There are quite a few rich girls in the college I am attending. Although I said I didn't have the luxury to maintain a girlfriend, if she had the luxury to maintain a boyfriend instead, that would do too. Making a rich girl my puppet wouldn't be hard at all. It's all coming together. My near future crystal clear, just as I stepped into the zebra crossing. The light was green, I have paid attention, of course, I didn't want to die because of a random car accident. The world spun. Beep. From the foggy distance where my eyes couldn't react, a yellow bus, a school bus, rushed at me. I moved my legs, but I was too slow. My eyes caught the driver's face. He was dizzy, his mouth foaming. That bastard was drunk. The world went sluggish as the school bus hit me in the face, throwing me meters behind only to roll its tires over my skull the next second. My brain matter spilt all over but my consciousness hadn't faded yet. Wow, that's strange. Do I get stuck like this forever? Is this how the afterlife actually feels like? I was proved wrong just as the world turned black and I could only curse whichever God oversaw the world, the universe. All my plans, all my hard work, all my dreams. They came to an end with my last breath. Plop. My almost faded consciousness jumped back in as I gasped for air, only to feel a thick liquid gush into my lungs. I didn't choke on it though, which was concerning. Not only that, Everything was dark and I barely felt any of my other senses such as hearing, smell and touch. I could feel myself freaking out, trying my hardest to move, but I calmed myself. In desperate situations like this, freaking out would be the last thing I should do. It took a while, but I calmed down and instead started to think. Where is this? Getting my skull crushed by a bus wasn't a good feeling. It was painful. That pain was enough to make me believe that all this was not a dream, nor was it a hallucination. Me surviving wouldn't be anything less than a miracle. But did I really survive? There is a chance this is the afterlife I was speaking of, and there is another chance that this is. Batum. A loud heartbeat interrupted me. It didn't belong to me. I could hear mine separately, which only complemented my suspicion. Unexpected death, darkness, and then a heartbeat that didn't belong to me. All this strangely reminded me of the cliché reincarnation genre. I was an avid gamer and was into anime and fanfictions before my father's death. So all this was not that startling. I have been reincarnated. Sounds absurd, I know. But when you have eliminated the impossible, 
Whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Couldn't see. That made sense. If this really is reincarnation and I am inside someone's womb, I wouldn't be able to see even with proper eyes, let alone baby eyes. But I have to confirm my suspicion. I tried to move my hands and reach out in front. It faced a warm wall, and as I touched it, I could hear a barely audible groan from outside. Ha, so I am indeed inside someone's womb. Then again, there is a chance this is a regression instead of reincarnation. Maybe I have been sent back into time, and this woman I am inside is actually my own mother? I would need to confirm it after getting out of here. Immediately as the thought crossed my mind, I felt a force pulling me towards a small gap in existence. I immediately understood what was happening. I was being given birth to. While the idea of coming through a woman's pussy wasn't that entertaining, I was still excited and nervous to find out where exactly I have been reborn. It was a struggle, a great effort was spent. Both from me and the woman I was inside. It must have been so painful for her. But in the end, she must be happy to see her child alive. But sadly, in case this isn't regression, she most likely wouldn't get the motherly love she deserves from me. Most of my humane emotions died a while ago. I can't come to love another woman as my mother. Not unless the sky turns upside down. Light soon found its way to my eyes as I was pulled out by two hands through the small gap of light. My vision was surprisingly clearer than a baby should have. Special body or reincarnation privilege. I watched as the two wrinkled hands raised me in the air, with the owner of the hands, an old woman, laughing to herself. My, my, look, it's a boy. She looked down at me with her large old and wrinkled face. A boy, so I am still a male. Good to know. Another good news is that she speaks English. Though there was also a very sad news. I don't recognize this woman, nor the surrounding. The house I was in was a hut made of mud. I have most likely been reincarnated in the past or maybe a medieval world instead of regressing back. As your late father had decided before, your name will be Amon. The woman smiled as she wiggled my body. I shook away my disappointment and the growing lump in my throat and instead focused on my name. Amon is a great name, almost too magnificent. But it would suit me when I myself become magnificent one day. If this is a medieval world, magical I mean, then I have some goals in my mind already. The woman laughed again. Look at you, not crying even though you were just born. That's such a warrior-like thing to do. I am sure. Your ancestor, Kalgaradash, she was forced to stop before I could interpret her words properly. A painful grunt coming from behind us. Ugh. The old lady snapped her neck back and I followed her gaze. Beside us, on the bed, a woman with blood and water coming out from between her legs was gasping for air like a fish out of water. It was a sad sight. From the looks of it, she was going to die soon. Acantha. The old woman in my arms yelled and slid beside the dying woman. My biological mother of this life who I didn't recognize. Don't just give up like that. Look, here's your son. She put me forward to the dying woman. To which the woman reached out her sweaty hand and clasped my right cheek. He stared at her silently. After staring at my eyes for a second with her red, blazing pupils, she smiled at me just as her hands slid down my cheeks and her head wiggled. Death grasped her soul. Acantha. The old woman yelled again and I sighed under my breath. I said I wouldn't be able to love anyone else as my mother ever did. But that didn't mean this wasn't a bit strange to see. She was still the woman who gave birth to me. Then again, this sadness will vanish in thin air in a few hours. I was wrong. The sadness vanished immediately as something else caught my eyes. On the dead woman's back that was pressing down in the bed, two white wings were poking out. I immediately turned to the yelling old woman. There were actual white wings from her back as well. I would have said they were cosplaying, but who would do such a thing while giving birth? Now that I focus my sense on my back, I could also feel something clinging to my back. Actual wings. Question popped up in my mind. They were angels? I immediately shook my head. No, that's not true. Angels won't live in houses made of mud. They must be some bird-like race. I need more information. If this is a fantasy world, then I will have a lot of things to prepare for. Moreover, if this is an anime world, then I would have a lot more things to prepare for. I just hope this world isn't too dangerous. That was when the old woman stopped yelling and looked at me sadly. I didn't know why, maybe because the reality finally sunk in me, realizing that I would never see my family again, or maybe because I just saw someone die my baby hormones gave up. Soon, I found hot streams of tears trailing down my cheeks as a cry left my mouth. 